And uh, today I want to um, conclude by looking at a story in the book of John that uh, John recorded, and it's the healing at the pool of this crippled man who was at the pool. Before we go there, the key scripture I think that Liz began with that really uh, sits over this whole series is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And we all, that's all of us, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We are being transformed. There are moments of like major breakthrough, but there's also a life to be lived where God's just continually changing us. And it can be a bit overwhelming if we think about our lives and all the different things in our lives that God could perhaps change in a moment. It could feel like this big list of things like, oh God, are you gonna work on all of that right now? It's like, no, you've got a whole life to live. And I will, God will, not me. Uh, if you're in my cell, I might point something out. But God will, he'll just lead you and guide you and, and bring about this transformation in your life, uh, you know, step by step. So we don't need to be overwhelmed by everything. A couple of weeks ago in cell, one of the guys, we were talking about coming from Liz's message and what God's challenging us, challenging us on at the moment. And one of the guys was sharing about um, his challenge with not road rage, but road frustration, I guess, with others and their way of driving and their way of getting around and how that can be really frustrating and cause an attitude to rise up. And I said to him, well, I'm so glad God isn't working on me in that area of my life at the moment so I can continue on with my road rage. <laughs> I'm sure that'll come up later, but for right now, God's doing other stuff and so I can continue to be annoyed and frustrated and say things about other drivers on the road because God's doing something in me right now that's different to that. Now, I said that in a joking way. The more I think about it, maybe God is challenging me on that right now, <laughs> okay? Um, but the truth is, it's not like God's just gonna put a big list of to-dos in front of you and say, change all of this in your life. The Holy Spirit is inside of us and he's gonna transform us step by step until we are with him for eternity and reflect his glory. Okay, John chapter five. Here's a story that uh, the Apostle John records from verse one. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would speak through your word and encourage us today because you are a good God and you love us and you care for us. And I pray that your word would come alive as we read it. In Jesus' name, amen. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate, which we learn about earlier in the year, now, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Beth sorry, Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five, uh, covered by five colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Now, little pause. This is, there's not a lot that uh, history has to say about this particular story. There's a bit of speculation on this pool and what, what is going on in this particular pool that certain times of the year, the water is stirred and that if you go down into this pool, you will be healed and it's only the first person that gets into the pool that is healed. There's some stuff going on here and there's not a lot of answers so it's probably worth not digging into too much. For me, it seems a bit like it's a legend because uh, that people think, or it's just something that's talked about that could happen, um, but no one really knows. There is a little thing in your Bible, if you read down further, that some people, that it was claimed that an angel would come down and stir the waters. So some stuff's going on here. Let's go, 
let's not get too distracted by that. Let's stick with the story. But I just wanted to pause there because it is an odd occurrence for that to happen. Okay, so verse 8. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, it is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. Man, I hate these Pharisees and religious leaders. They are just so out of tune. But he replied, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, who is this fellow who told you to pick, up, pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea, no, no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Then later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. This is a story of transformation. This is quite the story of transformation where one day in this man's life, his life was completely changed. I want to bring out the three things that Jesus said to this man and think about those and talk about those when it comes to transformation and God and what God wants to do in our lives. Jesus says three things to him. And the first is this, do you want to get well? I think that's a really good question. Something that stood out to me from this story when I first read it, well, when I read it a couple of weeks ago, thinking about um, today, was the man was 38, sorry, the man had been an invalid for 38 years. I'm 38 years old, and that just caught my attention. And I thought, hmm, imagine being like that for 38 years. The whole of my life, I was a certain way. That is some deeply ingrained thinking and life that is unlikely to change. And I was, I know a lot of us know about neural pathways and that because it's all, uh, I don't want to say popular, but it's, it's becoming understanded, uh, understanded, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, becoming, um, it's becoming more well known and how our brain works and all that, understanded. That's awful. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Um, all good. Um, neural pathways, I was reading about how after the age of 25, the way we think and live is pretty much embedded into our brain. That's how it's going to be. And from then on in, it is difficult to change and takes a whole lot of intention and a whole lot of effort to change the way you think and to change the way you do life. Well, here is a man who for 38 years had been an invalid. His identity would have been wrapped up in what he couldn't do, in his disability, and that was who he was. His identity was in that for 38 years, um, he had been that way. And so Jesus says to him, do you want to get well? To me, that's a, such an important question because we may have been living a certain way, had an attitude or a way of thinking for so long in our life that is just so deeply embedded in us, it is so familiar and comfortable to us. And Jesus asked us, do you actually wanna change that way of thinking? Because it's gonna mean things are gonna be different afterwards. It's gonna mean you're gonna have to do things differently and change. Do you really want to change? Do you really know what transformation means if I heal you? Do you want to get well? And when you th read this story, and if you've read it a few times and just sort of um, reflected on it, you get the idea that, okay, yes, this man was an invalid. He couldn't walk, he couldn't move. But for 38 years, he kept missing on being in the front of the line. I'm just speculating that maybe he just gave up and just had the excuse, well, I will never get to the front of the line so I'm never gonna get healed, and so that's just the way it is. And if for 38 years that's what you've been thinking, that is embedded into your thinking, that is just the way you will see life, that is your perspective on life, 
There is no changing me. I'm just accepting the way things are. That's how it is. End of story. And Jesus says, do you want to get well? And he's like, I can't. Can't be done. I can't, I can't be made well. He'd been that way for so long. And so I want us to think about not all the things that, you know, God could change in a moment, but what's that thing that God's sort of speaking to you about at the moment that's bringing to your attention and that maybe you've been a bit, well, this is just how I've been for my whole life. Sadly, I've been hearing stories of certain people that um, have caused broken relationships and have just said, well, this is just the way I am, so I can't change. And just causes further destruction. And it's heartbreaking. And Jesus is saying, hey, do you want to get well? And some people say, no, I'm too familiar with this way of life. I'm too used to living this way. I'm too afraid to step into what might be different. I'm too afraid to step into a different way of living. I'm too afraid of being healed. But Jesus, he's, he wants to heal you. A lot of the stories we read when it comes to Jesus healing people, it's all in response to faith. Great is your faith. And then he heals and he responds and he does something. Do you notice in this story that the guy actually didn't get a chance to say yes or no. I think he implied no, but he actually didn't say yes. And it says of Jesus and this man, one who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him, so Jesus noticed this guy amongst all the different people that were there. Jesus saw him lying there and he learned that he had been in this condition for a long time. Now, Jesus knows all things, okay? He could have just come there and go, yeah, I know the story of everybody. But I get the impression that he asked around. He spoke to different people. What's that guy's story? What's happened in his life? Jesus noticed this guy, found out about this guy and, and the struggles that he had and the life, the 38 years of being an invalid and being stuck at this pool, and he was moved with compassion. This guy didn't even have to say, please heal me, Jesus. Jesus has already decided he wanted to heal him. Um, elsewhere in the, the, uh, the gospel stories, in Mark chapter 1, verse 41, um, Jesus meets a man with leprosy. And he asks him a similar question, do you want to be healed? Uh, and... No, sorry, the, the guy with leprosy says something like, you know, can you heal me? Or if, if you can, please heal me. And it says Jesus was indignant. He got a little offended. It's like, if I can, do you know who I am? Do you know whose father my father is? Do you know I am the son of the God? I am the son of God. I'm the Messiah. I created everything that you see. If I can, he was indignant. And it's Jesus says, I am willing, be clean. I see the willingness of Jesus in this story. He notices this guy, he finds out his story, he's moved with compassion, and he says, I want to heal this guy regardless of what he says. I, for me, when I think about my church, my life, you guys, Jesus notices you. He knows what you're going through. He knows the struggles that you're facing. He knows the things that are holding you back when you just want to sort of be freed from all that and live in all that God's got for you, the great purpose that he has for your life and for us together. He wants to set you free into that. He knows your story, and you know what? He is willing to change you. The question, the ball's in your court. Do you want to get well? So there's that question. That's the first thing Jesus says to this man. Do you want to get well? I remember um, back years ago, a lot of, I know a lot of people know this story, but Liz and I went to Shell Harbor to plant a new City Life church there. Um, long story, painful experience, great team, great people that we did that journey with. Um, 
that God had to change me and things were not going the way I had hoped or expected them to go. And I had moments of just crying out to God and shouting to God saying, what are you doing to me? This is humiliating. Every time I go to a regional meeting, a meeting with uh, other church pastors who are planting churches and things are happening, my story is, uh, yeah, no, nothing's happened yet. Uh, And it was humiliating for me. I'm like, God, what the heck are you doing to me? And I remember in that process, sort of just coming before God and saying, all right, God, change me. Do whatever you have to do to change me. And I don't know if I really knew what I was asking. I knew I wanted God to change me. I didn't know the process that he would take me through to change me. And so over a couple of years, he, uh, it was an excruciating journey of just God doing this internal work inside my heart and spirit to change my perspective, to change my view uh, and my attitude towards it all. And I remember a moment, a specific moment, um, where God spoke to me and said, I've done it. You're changed now. And it was just this moment of revelation where God had sort of torn out this old, uh, just wrong thinking and wrong heart when it came to planning the church. And I went in with good intentions, but I had all this stuff attached to it that I didn't know about that God had to get rid of. And he freed me from that. And so when Jesus asks you, do you want to get well? That's a tough question to answer because if you say yes, he will change you. And it may not be an easy process and it probably won't, but it's going to be a process that he takes you through to do something transformative in your life. But he will set you free if you're willing to answer that question. Do you want to get well? The next thing that Jesus says to him is get up. And I love this too. He says, get up, pick up your mat and walk. So thinking about this story again, uh, it's in verse seven, Jesus, uh, sorry, the man replies to Jesus after Jesus asks him, do you want to get well? He says, sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And we know that he's been like this for 38 years. The picture I see when I read this and think about this is that, you know, one day, one day, I'll make it to the water. One day I'll get there and everything will be better. One day I will be healed and set free. One day. And I don't know about you, but I often have these thoughts. You know, one day it's gonna be better. I'm gonna be better, I won't be struggling with these certain things in my life. One day, that will be, I'll look back and go, that was something in the past. That didn't, that, that doesn't hold me back anymore. One day, this is gonna happen. I love in this story that Jesus says, today, get up, take your mat and walk. Jesus is doing something now. And I want to encourage us when it comes to transformation, not to think, you know, one day I will be better. But today's the day to pick up the mat. Today's the day to make some changes. Today's the day to walk in the transformation that Jesus wants to do in your life. Today's the day to respond to the prompting and the voice of the Holy Spirit to change. To to simply do what he's asking you to do. For this man, it was to pick up his mat. He'd already been healed. Jesus healed him. He was a healed man. But the next step was to pick up his mat, to get up, pick up his mat, and leave the pool. His life was no longer to be lived at the pool. He was no longer to live that same life. It was time to make some changes. He was no longer called to beg for a living, But now it's time to make a living. And I think when God wants to do some changes in us, when we understand what we're asking for, when he does set us free, when he does change us, we now have some more responsibility. 
we have been set free to do something greater for God. What I see in this story is Jesus notices this man. He, see, he has compassion for this man. He sees potential in this man's life and knows that God's got something for this man to do. And so I need to set him free so that he can live the purpose that God has given him and that he was created for. And Jesus... Uh, same with us. He sees us. He notices us. He knows the potential that is in our life, and He wants to heal us. He is willing to change and transform us because there is greater things ahead for us to do. And so now is the time to change. Now is the time to respond to the Spirit and get up and do the things that He is calling us to do. It's no longer to be one day things will be better. You know what? Today, I'm going to be obedient. Today, I'm going to listen to the Spirit. Today, I'm going to do what the Word of God says. Today, I'm going to change and respond to what God's doing. In the book of Colossians, Paul is writing to this church, and he says uh, to clothe yourselves with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness and patience, Alicia, when you're facing those challenges. She upstairs with the kids. All right, someone tell her I said that. Again, that's brave to share some, you know, stuff that you're going through, but it just shows that, you know, we're all facing and go through stuff like that. Clothe yourselves. When we are saved and Jesus trans saves us and we're born again, it's, we all know that we don't, uh, you know, like, so we've got baptisms coming up next week. And last baptism, I baptized Joel, amazing, and others in our church, amazing. And this time I get to baptize Caleb, my second son, and I can't wait, and others in our church. And I'm so excited. And I remember hearing a preacher talk about baptism and, you know, she was being a bit provocative, but saying, you know, someone that gets baptized goes under with the same, uh, what was the word she used? Um, cellulite, I think maybe. Goes under with the same amount of cellulite and comes up still with the same amount of cellulite, all right? I know that's a bit, you know, on the, you know, anyway. We are changed spiritually, but we're still the same physical being when we come up. And so when we come back up, Jesus is saying, I've got a new wardrobe for you. No longer putting on the old clothes. It's time to put on the new clothes. Clothe yourselves with compassion. It's not one day you'll be more compassionate. Today, put on compassion. It's not one day you'll find yourself being more kind and humble and gentle and patient towards others. No, today, put it on. Dress yourself with kindness. Dress yourself with humility and gentleness and patience. Clothe yourselves with these now. Get up and do it. And you will find that as you do that, you will just become more comfortable in these clothes and go, ah, oh, these actually fit well. And it's easier to love people and it's easier now to be patient and kind and compassionate towards others. You get used to it. At first, it's uncomfortable, loving and showing grace and compassion to others, but you get used to it because you're making the decision now to get up and to clothe yourselves with the change that Jesus wants to do in your life now. Moses in the Old Testament, he was 40 years growing up in uh, the palace and then 40 years out in the desert as a shepherd. So again, that 25 year thing, deeply embedded way of thinking and seeing the world. Uh, here is, he, you know, he, he went through some massive changes, 40 years in the palace, 40 years in the desert, and then 40 years leading the people of Israel. You know, that, that's got to do something to your brain. <laughs> Anyhow, God used him and he was amazing and submitted himself to God. But for 40 years, he was a shepherd and God turns up in the burning bush and says to him, now's the time to go and lead the people of Israel. Go. It's time to change. Your life is changing from now on. Go. You're no longer a shepherd. You're a leader. And I want to encourage us. The Holy Spirit is saying to you, get up. Put on whatever it is you need to put on. Respond to the Spirit and what He's leading you to do. It's not one day, it's now. Get up and live in the transformation. You are 
transformed. You do have the spirit in you, just like this man, but it wasn't until he got up and walked away and left the pool that he lived his transformed life. Amen? Oh, there's so many examples. Zacchaeus. Jesus notices this man up in a tree. is walking with a crowd of people, and he sees Zacchaeus up in a tree. But he doesn't just see, notice this short man up in a tree. He sees a man that has this generosity, this potential of generosity in his life and to be a blessing to others. And so he comes and meets with him. And through that encounter, this man is transformed by the presence of Jesus in his life. And his response is to give back to all those that he has ripped off and to live this life of generosity. Then, right then, he got up and he gave back. And God, he sees so much potential in all of us. He sees the stuff that we can do and accomplish and the difference that we can make in our families, the difference that we can make in our workplaces, in our communities. He can see the potential that you can make there. But it's up to us, the ball is in our court to say, Yes, God, I want to be healed. And yes, I will get up and make the changes now. And as we do that and we walk in that transformation, he will release us into the things that we can do to make a positive impact and difference in people's lives. Just like Moses, just like Zacchaeus, and just like this man at the pool. And then the final thing that he says, that Jesus says to this man, which I find, you know, funny, confronting, like, he says this. He finds him at the temple later. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, this is the third thing he said, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. I'm like, could have said something nice to him. Great to see you. What's it like to walk again? What are you doing with your life right now? But Jesus is like, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. 38 years as an invalid doesn't compare to eternity of separation with God. Stop sinning uh, instead of how you're going. Stop sinning. That's confronting. But this is what it says to me as we just finish up and thinking about transformation. Honor God with your life. Honor God with your life. As he changes you, as he's willing and as he cares and loves and does this amazing work in your hearts and lives, honor him with your life. Live that life that puts him first, that loves him, that worships him. Don't live the old way of life. You know, we, the old way of our life was, is dead to sin, but now we are alive to Christ. So let's not live the old way of sin. That's what he's really saying to him. Don't live the old way of sin. Live the new way of life. Another story um, in the Gospels, Luke chapter 17, it's about the 10 lepers. And Jesus is, uh, these 10 lepers shout out to him and say, can you heal us? Can you change us? He's like, sure. Go to the temple, do the things you need to do and you will be well. All 10 of them are healed. But only one of them comes back to Jesus to say thank you. And not just like this polite thank you, but he is just, he's just worshiping and praising Jesus so much. He's just, he just sees the difference in his life. He knows what's happened to him, what Jesus has done for him. And he's just so grateful. And he turns around from his old way of life and turns to Jesus and chooses to live a life to honor Jesus to praise and worship Jesus. And I wanna encourage us to keep turning around from the old way of life. He doesn't just heal us from the physical things and the mental things. He's changed us. We are a new creation in Christ. Let's be dead to the old life and alive to Christ in the new life that he has given us and live a life that honors him, that serves him and worships him. I love the song that we finished with today. Uh, No turning back. I think of this guy in this story. There was no turning back, no going to the pool. The nine lepers, they turned back to their old way of life. They just were able to live life their own way now. But the one, this one guy, 
He said, no, I'm not turning back to that old way of life anymore. I'm turning to Jesus. I'm going to follow Jesus. He has saved me. He has transformed me. He has set me free. My life is all about Christ now. He can have all of me. There is no turning back. I have been set free. And so I want to encourage us, just like Jesus said to this man, stop sinning. Stop living the old life. Live a life that honors and worships the King and set your eyes on him in Jesus' name. So here's an incredible story of transformation of what Jesus does in someone's life. But as you dig into it and read it, it's not all about what Jesus can do for us. It turns out what he does for us puts all the responsibility on us uh, to serve him, to worship him, to live transformed, and to do what he's called us to do, and to do what he's set us free to do. Here's the final thought, and um, Ben can come up and play, and we'll finish with some prayer. Every time this man tried to change, he couldn't do it. And that's where Jesus came in and said, allow me, allow me to change you.